Hello Liv, um, it's really good of you to meet with me today and have a think about um, traumatic bereavement experiences for young people. Um, and you and I have known each other. Um, I was your child bereavement specialist um, back when your dad um, sadly died some years ago. So can I take you kind of back to the beginning of a journey for a young person and kind of that first, that return to school, um, thinking about what it might be like for a young person where something so difficult has happened and then they're returning back into school, whether it's the next day or two or the next week or so, or even some sometime later down the line. Um, I wonder what you could help us think about um, in schools. Yeah, absolutely. It's very, very daunting. That was kind of my first thought was coming back into secondary school at that point. So, you know, thousands of people and coming back, kind of walking through the gate in that first morning back and it's okay, this is who I am now. But as far as I'm aware, nobody knows that. So it's really that kind of walking in and not knowing what to expect, not knowing who knows already, who doesn't, and kind of what's waiting there for you, support-wise. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's a lot for a young person definitely to, to take in. That soon after that's happened, it's kind of back to normal, but not at the same time. So even though your mum had let your school know um, what had happened, it was difficult for you because you didn't know who... Who knew? Is that? Yeah, I walked in, went straight to kind of my first lesson and um, my first teacher didn't even really mention it. So as far as I was aware, it was like, okay, no one knows. I just have to kind of go back to how it was before. And at first I thought that, you know, that might be great to just carry on like normal. But you very quickly realised that even though you've never dealt with that before, you know that you need a support network. You know that you need somebody at least there to kind of say, okay this is what we're going to do. So, yeah. And then I'm thinking, what was that like then for you having to carry that around if members of staff don't feel confident um, to mention to you and um, to ask you how you are or to find out anything about how you're getting on or what support you need? It's really hard, I think, because I'd obviously never dealt with this before. Like most people that have been through traumatic bereavement, they have no experience in this. And you know, I was 13, but I kind of, I don't know, assumed that my teachers would come up to me and say, hey, we know this has happened. How can we help you? Or this is what we're going to do from experience. But everyone kind of avoided it. And I don't know if it was them thinking that if they avoided it, then I would come to them when I needed to. And it was them trying to give me space. But it kind of just read off that, OK, this is something you need to deal with yourself a few of my friends knew but that was pretty much it and it was hard walking around with this on my shoulders kind of just thinking that I had to carry on with it so that I didn't make other people uncomfortable by bringing it up that was kind of the position that it put me in was don't bring it up because it's awkward for others which is hard when you're a kid and you're surrounded by adults who you think would kind of come to comfort you so you're managing then on a day-to-day -day basis trying to go in out of lessons get on with your work the best you can and um, do everything that's asked of you um, and school I can imagine what you said there and not wanting to make it worse thinking if we better not mention it she'll come to us um, if she wants some support but for you that just left you feeling um, a bit lonely carrying that would that be yeah yeah definitely yeah because you know you've been through this and you're dealing with it but it's still very fresh and you don't necessarily want to walk up to someone and say, hi, my name's Liv, this has just happened to me, can I talk to you about it? Because you never know what someone's reaction is going to be and you don't know if they've suffered with something and they're not comfortable. So kind of waiting for someone to come to you just makes it that bit easier. And it wasn't actually until I started seeing you that I had a support network, that I had someone I could talk to. You know, I looked forward to our sessions because I knew that that was the time that I could talk to someone. But unfortunately, the second, you know, our hour, hour and a half finished, it was straight back to normal. And it was almost kind of made me feel guilty for taking that time. I remember sometimes I'd have to schedule in to miss lessons and I would try and miss the um, like the least important lessons like PE or something where I wasn't then harming my education, but I was still made to feel as if, you know, do you really need this? Do you really need this time? And teachers just weren't really understanding that kids in these situations need help and you know it's not like they ever offered because I, I genuinely don't think they ever had the resources to so yeah I brought someone in for my benefit but it still made me feel as if you know are you sure you can't do this by yourself 
So that was hard. And then can, can you think about, obviously, the primary curriculum, but the secondary curriculum particularly has, has lots of potential activities and lessons and things that, that can be more difficult um, to manage. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what schools might want to think about um, when they're planning activities and lessons. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, you know, they have set things that they have to do, but if they know that a, a child has been through something quite traumatic, um, it can be helpful just to pull them aside and say, hey, look, today we're doing this, but are you comfortable with that? Is there another way that you can, you know, study it? Is there another way that you can do the work without having to really focus on that specific thing? Um, and again, that didn't really happen to me my first day back we were doing a poetry anthology and the poem my teacher had picked was about someone whose father had passed away. And I remember her just looking at me and saying, oh, uh, are you okay with this? And I said, um, no, not really. And she told me just to go and sit in the hallway. There was no kind of thing in place of, okay, well, let's find you something else to do. It was kind of sit in the hallway with your thoughts on it, but not get it out, not process it. And um, that was really hard because it just made me realize in that moment that, okay, the curriculum is not going to change for you and I think it should be flexible in that sense to kind of understand that not every single kid that's been through a traumatic bereavement is going to be that resilient that quickly. Thank you that must have been really tough to have to kind of make a quick decision about are you staying in the lesson or are you going outside what would your kind of suggestions yeah. be to staff um if they suddenly realise, actually, this lesson, I'm not sure, maybe this is going to have some difficult content for one of our pupils. Have you got some kind of suggestions of what you think might be helpful for them to do? Yeah, definitely. I mean, first things first, pull the child aside and say, look, this is what we're doing. Because at the same time, they might be comfortable doing it. And if you change it when they might have been happy to do it, that also might feel like them being excluded, if that makes sense. Sometimes children yeah. don't want to deal with the kind of traumatic parts of say literature or something but other times actually it might be kind of cathartic and help them so I think giving them that choice and not making them feel as if they should pick a certain way you know really trying to influence them to mm, you should do it um and just understanding that they're not trying to get out of doing the lesson they're not trying to get out of doing that subject that it's really really hard for them so again I think just talking to them on that level and kind of treating them like like, like a person you know that they're not doing this for any other reason than their own kind of emotions. And then I wonder whether we can think about whether there's anything about relationships with staff and how that was, or relationships with friends or peers. I don't know, Liv, are there, are there things that we can learn um, and take forward in day-to-day in -day life for young people? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like I said, I, I kind of went back in and all of these teachers that I didn't know um, seemed to know what had happened. And I guess looking at that in a positive way that teachers that did know went round and kind of warned them and let them know okay so this student has been through this if you see them just know this because it, it is helpful to know if they you know have to cover a class if they see you outside of lessons but I think some of them then didn't know what to do with that information so they'd see you and they'd kind of give you a look or they'd come up and ask you how you are and it's like if you don't know who they are already it's quite daunting and they think they're being helpful. But it is also that thing of like the relationships that teachers have with their students. I know that I had one teacher who I was really close to and um, I was able to talk to her about these problems kind of whenever I had them. Um, and she never pushed on it. She never told anyone else, you know, really kept that um, between us. But I think, I think teachers should be aware and I, I'm not it doesn't upset me that kind of every single teacher knew because I think that is important for them to be aware of it because, you know, they run into you in the hallway, they see you upset, they cover a lesson. If they have no idea what's going on, that's kind of them setting themselves up for failure for not being aware of that. But I think knowing when to approach someone that's been through that is kind of the key to it. And I kind of picked up for you, it was more helpful when it was members of staff you already knew and had a kind of a trusted relationship with. Yeah, yeah, because they already knew me for who I was before this had happened to me. Whereas teachers that didn't know me before, kind of as far as I was aware, this was the whole of my identity that they knew. They only knew me as the, you know, the child that had been bereaved. And 
it's not necessarily a negative thing, but it also doesn't take into who I am as a person and kind of all the things I have that make me me. They didn't know that, so they'd only see me as, you know, this sad child that had been through this traumatic thing, whereas the teachers that I already knew and had relationships with, they knew the things I enjoyed, they knew my emotions, they knew who I was, my personality, and it was a lot easier to talk to them because they knew who I was, they knew when I was off, when I wasn't, and when I was having a bad day for a different reason, rather than just assuming that everything kind of came back to that. That's really important, really helpful for us to kind of think about in the way we build relationships with young people after they've been bereaved and build on the relationships we've already had. And is there anything you might mention regarding friends, peers, or anything that you think that'd be helpful for schools um, to be aware of? I think it's a hard thing to approach class peers, for example, because I definitely, after it happened, wasn't in a position where I wanted, you know, my 30 classmates to know. But at the same time, I think it might have been helpful for them to have known you know, just the basics that, you know, this happened, this kind of bereavement happened, nothing more. Um, Just so that they kind of knew, because it was a big thing of when I would disappear from lessons, if I was having a hard day or if I was having a counselling session, it would leave a lot of questions. Um, And obviously, you know, social media had started becoming a thing. So I had friends on there and classmates on there. And it kind of it leaves room for a lot of questions that I think as well teachers aren't equipped to answer and I think it can put teachers in a really hard position where they don't know what they can and cannot say you know if if a peer had gone up to one of my teachers and said well where's Liv that would have put them in a really hard situation of do I say something do I not say something and I think that adds to the kind of struggle in the relationships that sometimes they then don't approach you to talk to you because they really don't want to overstep the boundaries that they think have been put in place But I definitely think that maybe assemblies should be put in place when we do, you know, hard subjects that bring up things like bereavement and loss. I I definitely think that there should be some kind of education around that, that, hey, you might be sat next to someone who has gone through that and you might never know or they might talk about it openly. And that's completely personal, but it happens and it's a very normal thing because I when it when it happened to me, I never. I didn't know anyone else that it had happened to. So as far as I was aware, I was the only one in this kind of huge school of people. And I think there were definitely other people this had happened to. And I think just not knowing names, but just someone saying to you, hey, you're not the only one, this is fine, is definitely a helpful thing that can be can be done in that situation. Thank you. That That's super helpful um, to kind of think about... Um, You know, lots of these things haven't got a clear-cut answer. You must do it like this, so you mustn't do it like that. But I'm really hearing from you, Liv, the importance of communication and that if staff had felt... When staff are more able to ask what you think of your perspective and to find out from you, then then they're a better place then to support your friends and your classmates and, and answer their questions as well. Yeah, I definitely think it's that kind of situation of let the child lead. You know, sit down, have a conversation with them and see where it goes. Because you might find that they're really shut up in class and they don't ever want to talk about it and they seem kind of off. And you start talking to them about, you know, maybe just something they're into. You might see them reading a book they like or doing something they enjoy. And it can open up a whole whole world of things and everything can come out at that point. And you can build that relationship with them and you can help them without having to walk up to them and say, hey, I know your parent passed away. How do we help you? You can do it in other ways. And I think... Yeah, I I think opening up the communication is the key to it and not being afraid of talking about it, but also knowing that there are other ways to to start that conversation. That it doesn't always have to be a direct conversation. It might be through the route of something else and they already know about you to kind of build the communication, build a relationship. Yeah, absolutely. Let them know that you know that it hasn't changed them and they are still who they were before and children will definitely thank you for that. Thank you. Liv, thank you so much for giving us some of your insight um, today. I think that's going to be really helpful for all adults in schools to have a think about if there's one more thing they could do to support a bereaved yeah. young, um, young person in their school. Thank you so much. No, anytime. Thank you.